Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to be making a chord progression using Cubase chord pads, which is a great tool for coming up with ideas. And it also means you don't need any prior music theory knowledge. Now it's worth taking a second to appreciate just how vital it is to be able to come up with a chord progression for your tracks. It not only sounds cool, but when you create the basic musical structure for your tracks, it gives you the direction and inspiration which will help you finish your projects. As you'll see, we will make a basic chord progression here, but once we have that, we will then make lead parts, bass lines, arpeggiator patterns, and it all starts with this basic chord progression. So before we get into that, I'm just gonna quickly raise the tempo of this track as 120 BPM is a little slow for an uplifting poppy house track. So just click in the BPM counter on the left hand number and just drag up till it reads 126. You can double click and enter that manually if you want. And we're just going to readjust our loop region. So I'm just bringing that so it starts at bar five again and just adjusting the end with the control point. So it's nicely looped. So it seems like a very small change, but that will have a big impact on the overall energy of our track. All right, on to creating the chord progression. So in order for us to use Cubase chord pads, we first need an instrument. So there are various different ways you can load instruments into Cubase, but probably the easiest is just to right click in the channel area and select add instrument track. So from the instrument drop down, we click on that. And if you come down to where it says synth and just select Halion Sonic SE, make sure it is stereo. And we'll just call this piano and then add track. So this is Halion, the instrument, and we're going to be using the bright acoustic piano setting. So if we come down here and just double click that, that will load up the instrument and then you can hear it when you play the keys. And with that loaded, we can close Halion now. So I'm just going to make these tracks a little bit slimmer. So I'm going to select the kick. I'm going to hold shift, select the piano. So they're all highlighted. And then I'm just going to click on the little adjustment line and drag them up just to make them a bit smaller. And then just make sure that my piano track is the one that's highlighted. This is also important if you have a MIDI keyboard plugged in, it should automatically work, but just make sure you've got the channel selected that you want to be able to play. Now my Halion is this pinky red color. I suggest you do the same on yours. So again, to change the color, just hold Alt or Option, click in the colored area and then select the pinky color. So let's go to our lower zone and then we're gonna to go to the chord pads tab and you can click these sort of oblong pads and play the chords. But before you go any further, just a quick tip, click the little down arrow here and select lock all pads. Otherwise, as you play the chords, the voicing automatically changes, which can be quite confusing and frustrating when you're new to this. So as you can hear, we can click the pads and jam around with it. But just to explain, the chord on the bottom left-hand corner is always the one chord. So most chord progressions start with the one chord, meaning when you're jamming away, always start with this chord and work out from there. If you like a chord, you can simply drag it into your project. I'm just gonna scroll down a bit so we can get to our piano instrument. And don't copy this because I'm gonna do it in a different way, but if you want to, you can simply click on a pad and drag it into your arrangement and then you'll have that chord there. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo that by pressing Control or Command Z. So let's go through the steps that you can follow to make a chord progression. So the first step is pick the scale that you're going to work in. Now Chord Pads has most of the common scales already built in as presets, which you can get to by clicking this icon and then selecting Load Chord Pads Presets, which brings up this window with all of these different scales and chord selections that you can use. Now, by far the most commonly used are the major scales and the minor scales. Of course, in your own projects, you can use whatever you want, but in this track, we're going to use a major. So let's just scroll up and find that. So we've got the major scale, key A. So just click that and you should see these pads update. 
Now I can just click off that window. And then we've got all of the chords that are in the A major scale, or almost all, all the important ones. So now we're in the correct scale, let's look at another way of triggering the chord. So let's come over to this little speech bubble and click that, which shows the chord assistant, and this is what's known as a circle of fifths. Each of these buttons plays a chord. A, of course, is our one chord that we're always gonna start our progression with, and all of the notes above these two lines in this area here are all chords that are in the A major scale. So all of these chords basically work together. The rest of the chords are further removed from the A major scale. They can still work, but a lot of them will sound bad when you try them. So if you wanna keep things easy, just use the chords in this section. And of course you can jam around and come up with something if you like, but the chord selection that we're gonna use in this tutorial is A, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, and then B. And we can take the chords out in exactly the same way. So we're gonna click and drag on the A, drag that onto our piano track, then F sharp minor, drag that so it's just after the first chord. Now we need to zoom out a little bit. So in this case, I'm gonna hold Control or Command on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna use my mouse wheel and just zoom out a bit. Then I'm gonna drag in my C sharp minor chord. And then lastly, my B chord. Now we've got our chords in, I can close the chord assistant and I can hide my lower zone. Let's just adjust our loop region so it's over the full chord progression. So I'm just gonna use the control point, drag that across. And also I need to now copy the kick clap and the closed hat over. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. First, we want to select all of them and then I can either hold Alt or Option on my keyboard, and you'll see it turns to that scissor tool, but if I do that and then click and drag, it will simply copy my selection, or with it all selected, I can then hit Control or Command plus D to duplicate it. Okay, now let's quickly play that. Very basic, but we're gonna be tweaking that soon. Now. All of these chords at the moment are in separate MIDI chunks, so let's glue them together. So I wanna select my glue tool, I can select it from the tool menu up here, or I can right click and select the glue tool from the right click menu. Then I'm gonna select all of the chords and just click them once, and they're all glued together into one MIDI segment. Now I can double click that to go into them, and they'll appear in the lower zone editor. Now just so you know, if you can't see the note names on each of the notes, you need to zoom in a bit vertically. So you use this little control slider here. If you zoom too far in, those note names disappear. So just zoom out a bit until you can see them all. And to be fair, we don't really have much room in this lower zone here. So what you can do is click the little arrow here, which will open the MIDI editor up in its own window. So we've got a lot more space now. Uh, just gonna zoom out a little bit and go down so we can see all of our chords. Now the first thing that I want to do is move this last chord down one octave. So there's a nice easy way to do this. Of course we could just click and drag it down one octave to B again. I'll just undo that. Or with it all selected, we can hold shift and press the down arrow on our keyboard and it just moves everything down one octave. All right, let's quickly play that. So it sounds all right, but it's now time to get creative with the basic chords we have and make it sound a bit more unique. What we're gonna do is incredibly simple as we only use the notes that are already in the chords. So you can't really mess it up. Uh, but before we do any of that, let's just copy this chord progression. So I'm just gonna close this window for a second. And let's just hide my lower zone for a second as well. And I want to make a copy of this chord progression. So as we did, when we copied the kick, clap and hat, make sure this is selected and then hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and just click and drag it over. I can also zoom out a bit, just holding Control or Command and using my mouse wheel. Now the reason we're duplicating it is that we're gonna 
make the chords in this MIDI segment a bit more complex, but I want to keep a version with just these simple chords in to use later in the track. Also, to make things a little bit clearer, let's actually color this MIDI segment so it's different from this MIDI segment. So with this highlighted, I'm gonna come up to the color palette up here, and I'm just gonna select dark orange, just for example, so now we can see that we've got two sort of different versions. All right, with that out the way, let's go into the first MIDI segment. I'm gonna bring up that extra window by clicking the arrow, and I'm just gonna zoom out a bit vertically, so just to give ourselves a bit more room. If you go too far, you'll lose the note names, so don't go too far zoomed in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is select the middle notes of each of these chords. So with the first note selected, I'm gonna hold shift, and then I'm gonna select all the middle notes of the chord. Now, once more, we're gonna hold down shift and hit the up key this time. Then we're gonna do the same, but for just the last two notes that we moved up, so the E and the D sharp. I'm just gonna hold shift and press the up key. Now let's play that back. So it sounds way, way more cool than our original chord progression, which I'll just play very quickly just so you can compare. And then again, we'll go into the separate window. And the last thing that we're gonna do is duplicate all of the bass notes. So the bass notes are the lowest notes in the chords. So once again, we're gonna select the first note, hold shift, and then just select all the other lowest notes. And instead of moving them down one octave, we're gonna copy them. So in this case, we want to hold Alt or Option, which is obviously how we copy things in Cubase. And I'm gonna click and drag this A down to an A below it. Okay, and this is just gonna have the effect of kind of thickening up the chords. So let's just scroll a little bit to the left and I'm gonna put my playhead there and hit play. So you can hear it really adds that nice deep element to the chord progression, very nice. Now that is what you can achieve without having any music theory skills. So imagine what you can do if you had a bit of knowledge. Now as this is a big topic, and it needs to be taken slowly and in easily digestible chunks, we created the Killer Melodies course, also known as Music Theory for EDM Producers. It takes you right from the beginning, all the way through learning how to create epic chord progressions and melodies. You'll learn about borrowed chords, stable and unstable notes, how to make triads, how to resolve chord progressions to create tension and release, and much, much more. So check that out if you're interested. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to get way better sounds and how to make the bass line for this track. Exciting stuff. Don't forget to save your work. Here is a quick clip of the track to remind ourselves of what we are going for. I'll see you in the next one. When I said there's nothing between us anymore